Mine and my wife's place here in uh, Lakeland, Florida. We live on a 500-acre uh, a horse ranch. We don't own the whole 500, but part of it is ours. And uh, this is our home uh, out here in beautiful Lakeland, Florida. I was born in Mulberry, Florida, raised in uh, Plant City, Pinecrest area. Uh, most all my life, I've been here forever. My granddaddy was in trucking all his life, retired out there at IMC Rainbow for over 40 years. My father retired off the road with over 46 years of trucking. I've been around it my whole life. I think I, I would like to tell you I was born in one of them. What led me to it is the love that I just had for it. I mean, I can remember at a toddler's age uh, blowing the horn and it just sending chills down my spine. I loved everything about it. And from that point forward, you know, there were seven kids in my family. I had seven brothers and sisters. So out of all of us, I was the only one that when they go around the room or, or at any time in school and ask, what do you want to do for a living? I'd always say, I want to be a truck driver like my, like my father. That's always what I always wanted to do. And then when, my, when I was younger, my, my dad got a job pulling uh, heavy equipment for Caterpillar. And that's where my love for hauling heavy equipment began. And I always said, that's what I want to do. That's where I want to be, and I won't be happy until I get there. And from that day forward, I, I, I wanted nothing more than to haul heavy equipment. And I got into it. I've been doing it all, all my life. I've been in trucking ever since I was 18 years old. I started out uh, running dump trucks, uh, bought my first mini-wheeler. I think it was back in 2005 or 2006, somewhere around in there. Uh, I bought a, I, I had a, uh, I had a 1999 W900, uh, long hood. That was, uh, I also, I bought another one. I won't tell you the name of it. I'm a little ashamed of that one. Uh, but, uh, and I had a T800 as well. Wait, okay. wait, I'm, I'm, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, we can't let you get away with that. You gotta tell us what, well, you don't have it anymore. It's not like no, I don't have it. Okay. So. I bought a Volvo 670, brand new. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm gonna say this on. I'm gonna say this right now, so he hears this. I bought that for my brother, by the way. Uh, that was his. Uh, I'm gonna put that one on him. Uh, although he cussed me for about three weeks after he, after I bought it for him, but it was his. And uh, so anyway, yes, uh, I, I had that one as, as well. It was actually had a Cummins in it. It was it was a great truck. Uh, but uh, we used to pull anything. If if you could put it on it, he would pull it, and it worked out good for us. And then, uh, you know, the economy went bad. I sold them all out, and uh, then I went to work for someone. And then uh, some, you know, seven, eight years later, here I am. This is all I know. If, if, I don't, if, if I'm not doing this, I think I'll just have to ask if you want fries with that. I mean, I'll give you extra because I know you, but uh, that's it, you know. It's a 2014 uh, Kenworth T660. It's a Fitzgerald Glider. I bought the truck from Joel Dawes, owner of Dawes Contract Carriage out of Waterford, Wisconsin. I bought the truck from him in uh, August of 2017. When I got it, uh, I put the fourth axle on it, made it into a heavy haul. It's got a 60 series Detroit in it with a 13 speed. It's a 273 inch wheelbase. Got the big studio sleeper on it. Uh, the whole truck's bagged. Uh, what I love most about the truck is uh, when you first see it, it's the stance of it, the way it looks, uh, which is why I pursued this truck from Joel, because I loved it from the day I seen it. I wanted something that not everybody else had. You don't see a lot of aero trucks in the heavy haul side. That's what I wanted to do with it, uh, because, like I said, you don't see a lot of them, and it was something that was going to be something really cool and different. Man, and it just turned out perfectly. When you can roll up and set that thing down and lay the whole truck and trailer out on the ground, it just, to me, it just looks spectacular. 
when I first got with my wife, she hadn't been around too many trucks before. And actually, one of our first dates was at the 75 Chrome Shop show. That was one of our first dates together. And she was a trooper. We went there. We were there all day. You know, it was 100 degree heat. And she, we stuck out the whole day like we always did. Actually came back for the second day as well. That was our second date, poor girl. I believe one of the years that we were there, uh, she was actually, I think, five or six months pregnant with Colt. And, uh, you know, any of you ladies been that pregnant out in 100 degree heat, she was a trooper, never complained once. And I could tell that she, she fell in love with what they were doing there then. And she was interested. She asked a lot of questions. Uh, you know, I introduced her to, to a lot of my friends that were there. Uh, God help her on that part. They ruined her sometimes. But anyway, um, but, you know, that, that's, that's where the love of that started. And then she could see the passion that I had for it, and it just kind of fed off of that. We went back home, and she said, you know, I can see what that does to you, and, and I want to be part of it. And that's where it began. And from that day forward, I mean, literally, all year long, you know, if I'm out here doing something with it, cleaning it, working on something, changing something, she's right there with me. I mean, she helps me like one of the guys in the shop. I mean, she really does. She's right there with me. And she doesn't know a whole lot of mechanical things, but she doesn't have to. She just, you know, I just need a hand every once in a while, but she's always willing. And I'll be honest with you, the interior of those trucks that I've always showed, I use them every single day. And, you know, dusty fields, landfills, we deliver equipment. There is dirt everywhere. She keeps them spotless. The inside of the truck is that's her baby, and it is absolutely just it's impeccable on the, on the inside. But that's because of her, you know, that's what she does. And and of course my little one, he just loves trucks anyway. So you know, but his attention span is about as long as mine. So he'll get to working on my truck, and then when we're at the show, he'll see you know uh, Mr. Jamie or, or Mr. Bob Harley pull up. Well then he's over there. They've contracted him for that for that job. So I, I I lose some help when I get around those guys. But other than that, it's you know they're always there with me. And also. I got to include my other two kids, uh, Alyssa and Preston. They are always with me too. Alyssa, pretty much, she she likes to come up once the work is done and just kind of you know just look beautiful. And but but my oldest boy helps me out. You know he helps me with some of the the harder work and stuff like that. But now he's upgrown and making his own way, so it's a little more difficult to get him uh, out there. But he does come over and, and help dad from from time to time. So. When I was when I was younger, you know, all I could think about was this. There's probably been some of my friends along the way, never to my face, but probably when they turn around and go, man, I wish this guy would shut up about that truck. And it's all trucks. Like I'll see guys like, uh, like in all facets, like from Mr. Terry Aslinger that, that has one of the, the most beautiful uh, single axle Peterbilts in America to, to uh, Mr. Jamie Williams who has, and Truett, out of Texas, one of the most classiest guys I've ever met in my life. And, uh, you know, uh, Todd and Beth, uh, owns, owner of uh, Clean Slate Environmental, great friends of mine. It was a big influence when I got started in the show deal, you know, but I watched how those guys operated, the class, the class that they portrayed. There's, there's not many of them guys, and that's important to me. And they, you can see the difference and those guys and some of the other ones and those guys are a class apart and that's what I wanted to be part of eventually I told myself and I was a young cat whenever I first met Truett Truett took time with me and I don't even think I was I was probably just a couple of years in, in it and man I he had a truck called High Cotton and it was it was it for me and and I had met him in, in, in Wildwood of course he took the time for me he stood there he talked to me in the you know 95 degree heat for I don't know, an hour. And True didn't have to do that, you know. But he did that for some, you know, uh, you know, just some tattooed kid out of Mulberry, Florida. But that's the kind of impression him and Todd. Todd was a big influence. Todd brought a truck down to the, to, to the show called Chop 93. And that was when I first met him. It's been years ago now. But what a class act. Him and his, his lovely wife, Beth. I mean, they just... You know, how they handled themselves, conducted themselves, no matter who it was, it could have been the janitor to the owner of the company, they, they treated everybody with class and, and dignity, and that's, that's what I took from the, those guys, and I'll always keep that, you know, near and dear to my heart, no matter what happens, you know.
some of the reactions I get from some of my peers is I've actually had most all positive reactions to it. I get a lot of, man, those units look good together. You know, how do you like the trailer? Does the Globe hold up versus, uh, you know, the Trail King that I had for so many years? So how does the Globe hold up versus the, the Fontaine that I ran for years? And the answer is it holds up well. I mean, it's it, it does everything the other ones did. I do like some of the simplicities about this one that, that the Fontaine does not have. The hookup mechanisms are a little different. The guide plates are a little easier. So even in any heavy hauler will tell you, most of the time on a new trailer, if you're off just a half an inch, it's going to make you look stupid. Well, this one doesn't do that. I mean, you can be off in half an inch or so, but you know, again, until it gets good and broke in, you don't have that 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 wiggle room, if you if you will. But this one here is a little more forgiving, and uh, the durability of it has been, has been great. Now, versus the other units that I've ran with, it's pretty much the same, but yet smoother and just a lot more cooler to be honest with you and the the powder coating versus the paint holds up a lot better i've ran a lot of you know 330s and 350 escalators on this trailer now the deck is scarred up i mean it's a track machine so it's going to do it but it's not as ripped up and tore up as the painted trailers it's a lot more durable when you're running the d-rigs and stuff like that uh, it doesn't flake as easy it doesn't chip as easily so it's a lot more durable it's, it's definitely something to think about when you're going to build one of these things I first heard about Globe Trailers uh, was just being from Florida, and that's where their manufacturer is, is down in Bradenton. Um, I had had some friends of mine that had dealt with them before, and they had had one built before. So I just made the call one day, and I got put in touch with uh, Ryan there, and he was my he was my guy up to even today. So man, if I need something, I call him. It's there. I mean, they really are. They really are great in customer service, and that was big to me because, like, again, being small, you want somebody that's going to be there for you. If you need, if you need a part shipped in, you know, they'll overnight it to you. If you need, you know, if you're down and you need something, man, they, you know, they, they're on it, and that's what I needed. You know, I called the other big manufacturers, you know, and I, I called them, and I couldn't even get a phone call back. I felt like if I wasn't ordering ten of them, they didn't want to deal with me. But with Ryan, man, he. He didn't care if I wanted a half a trailer or, or, or ten of them. He treated me as, as if I was, you know, one of, one of the big dogs. So I told him I wanted to custom build it. You know, I didn't want it just to run of the mill. I just didn't want, you know, the standard lights that, that they put in there. I wanted extra. I wanted the the neck lit up around the pony motor. I wanted the custom deck lid on the pony motor to say the name of the truck and stuff like that. So when I presented those things to Ryan, he said, "Man, I think that's a great idea." He goes, "We've we've never done one quite so in depth, but we can do it." 
not at one point did, did he ever say we can't do that. He always said we'll we'll make it happen and that was that was great news for me. So we just started the process of it, and we started. You know, I spec the trailer out, and I wanted the center well lit up uh, with lights all the way down it, inside out. And he helped me with that. He helped me, you know, help me get the the right lights. It's got a right way scale on it. That's a Bluetooth right way scale. You can, as you load the wagon, you can see it on your phone. You can see what the you know what the actual weights are on it. So if you need to make an adjustment, most of the time we we load the same a lot of the same things. So you get pretty much a feel for it where it needs to go anyway. But if you get that one rare piece where you want to look at it, you can. And uh, that's something that that he presented to me, and we went with it. And man, it turned out great. And then from there, it was just pretty simple. We put it all together, gave them the paint coat, and then they matched it up with the powder coat. As these trailers are powder coated, they're not painted. They got an oven big enough down there at their facility to handle these trailers, which is amazing in itself. I took the tour of, of their facility down there, and man, it's it's state of the art. And so uh, that was exciting, you know, to go see all that, how their operation was, and then the quality of, of their guys that they had down there. They have a mechanic I'd like to mention. His name's Mike, and he works on their trailer. He's like one of their lead guys. Man, the guy is phenomenal. If you brought it to him, he's an absolute genius. He can figure it out. I wanted the airlines run out the middle of the neck instead of coming out the front. I actually wanted both. So if I were to pull this trailer with a regular truck, I could use the connections up on the front of the neck, or I could, with the custom truck that I have, I could run it out the back of the frame. It could do that as well. I didn't want those connections up front to be open. I want them to be hidden. So when I go to the show, whatever I can, or just right down the road, I can I can conceal them. So I went down there and I and I told Mike that, and then he handmade me these covers to go over the connections in the front of the trailer which are awesome. So it just looks like it flows, everything flows smoothly. And then from there, man, it was like, you know, it took them about 90 days to build it. And then it wasn't quite 90 days, I'd say, uh, maybe 75 days or so. He called me and said, hey man, it's ready to go. Being a small company, uh, just a one truck operation, I needed something that was gonna last me a really long time. And if it didn't last, somebody that was somebody that would stand behind their product and back it up. And Globe is one that does that. They have a 10-year structural warranty on this trailer. So that was a big deal. Most all the rest of them just have a five-year. Well, an additional five years in my situation is a big deal. One of the things I would like to explore is their patented hydraulic flip for their Stinger. Uh, if you get the chance to look, look that up, the guys have got that thing just perfected. It is amazing. No more shimming and pinning and all that stuff. You roll up, you lay it down, you simply pin it in one pin, and it's hydraulic operated. If you know, no, no more getting a forklift to, to flip the, the extra axle over or getting, you know, getting the crane operator to stop for a minute to do that. No, no, you can do it all on your own, and it's all done with a flip of a switch. So uh, that that's something to really explore if, if you're looking to haul heavier stuff. And that's going to be something I explore down the road as well. Me and Joel had already worked out buying this, this truck from him. So we already knew that's where we were headed in that direction. But this truck wasn't going to be ready in time. So he sat down, pure attitude with one of his drivers. I worked on the trailer, restained the deck, you know, did some finishing touches on it. Really, really went over with a fine tooth comb. And then he got here and we left that following that following day, you know, and, and rode out to Dallas and the rest is history. So and I gotta be honest with you, Chris, when I walked up when we sat there in the in, in that and they called, you know, they third, second in first place and they said, you know, pure attitude, Bubba Branch, man, I was elated. It was a it was a dream come true for me. And he was there with me, my oldest boy was there, his son AJ was there. Uh, it, it, Eric Bilgo was there with us. It was it was a great thing, you know. It really was definitely a dream come true for me. Well, I hope that uh, in. In the future, I don't have any specific time. You know, I want to get this one where it's uh, consistently making money. And then from there, uh, who knows? You know, I hope to one day expand and possibly, you know, second or third truck. Uh, but for right now, you know, it's just literally one, one day at a time.